There are seven things I wished I knew before I made the switch from Windows to Linux. Look, I've always been a Microsoft person. I started off with DOS, then Windows 95, and then all the versions of Windows in between, including Windows servers like Windows NT. So I decided to switch over to Linux whilst Microsoft is fixing their Windows 11 bugs. Whilst I'm not fully Linux committed yet, there are a bunch of things I know now that I wished I knew before I made the switch over. So if you are thinking of doing the same thing and in no particular order, here are a bunch of stuff that you should know. Number one, it doesn't friggin' matter. Linux is super confusing for anyone who hasn't touched it before. So do yourself a favor and choose a desktop distro that has a nice graphical interface that allows you to click around, install apps, and just get a play with the new system. But stop the madness of comparing distros. It really doesn't matter for us newbies who are just trying to dip our toe into this whole Linux world. Number two is make it simple for you. I originally installed Zorin OS on another hard drive and set it up that my system could choose to boot into Windows or boot into Linux. Don't do that. It is way too frustrating trying to learn a new system whilst knowing in the back of your mind that you've got some work to do. So you've got to stop everything, reboot the system, reboot into Windows just to get a little bit of work done. What I highly recommend is you do install whatever distro you want onto a virtual machine on top of Windows. This way you can bounce between Windows and get your work done and then go back into Linux and start learning it. I've got a whole video about that. I will link that in the description below. Number three, Linux is not Windows. Yes, I know this should be filed under the uh, no sh** clause, but when installing Linux, the recommendations you're gonna get from everyone is find a Windows-like feel, such as Zorin or Mint. And yes, whilst I absolutely agree with that, I realize that even though the environment looks like Windows, it isn't. Things just work differently, especially things like folder structure. There is no C drive, for example. That's like a mind-blowing thing. But the best thing about the fact that it's not Windows is that everything can be customized and changed to work in the way that you want them to work instead of you having to adapt to the way that a default operating system forces you to work. Also in Windows, we're used to heading off to a website to hunt for the software that we want. In Linux, you use a package manager. It's like the app store that we get on our phone. You go there, find the software that you want, press the button, and it will install it for you, including all the dependencies that it needs to run. Also with Linux, there is no rebooting required, which is pretty darn nice. Number four, help is everywhere. Linux is very much a community-driven platform, so if you're stuck and confused with how to do something, head over to the various forums, Facebook groups, and distribution's own website and look for the help there. And that leads me to my next point. Number five, everyone has an opinion. In my last video, I showed you how to install Zorin, and the comments were, you should try Mint. I showed you how to set it up on a virtual environment and the comments were, hey, you should install a dual boot system. I don't believe people are being malicious. Most people are simply trying to help. So don't be overwhelmed by making the wrong decision. Zorin isn't more right or more wrong than say something like Mint. Number six, not everything just works. Yet, yeah, contrary to popular belief, not everything in Linux is seamless and just works instantly out of the box. While Linux has a plethora of free apps that are very much equivalent to their Windows apps, they require their own learnings. So LibreOffice, as an example, is so close to Microsoft Office. But if you've grown up designing complicated macros in Excel, then Calc is going to take a bit of time to learn its nuances. Now, it's easy to say for people, hey, stop using Photoshop and just use GIMP. But if you've gone years and years of learning Photoshop, well, you're going to have to get used to how this new program works. So whilst, yes, they achieve the same results at the end of the day, you need to allow some time to learn where everything is. Now that leads me to point number seven, which is command line prompt or CLI. Firstly, don't be intimidated by the CLI. Yes, it's easier to click than to write out a command, but sooner or later, you're gonna have to start understanding the basics of Linux, and it becomes easier and easier when you start learning how command line works. Now, undoubtedly, you will look up tutorials to do something that you need. And most of these tutorials use the terminals and show the command line prompts to achieve whatever it is they're trying to teach you. The mistake I made earlier on was simply seeing that command in the tutorial, copying and pasting that into terminal and then hitting enter. Then moving on to the next one, copying and pasting, and then next, 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 until it was finished. So I blindly followed it without understanding what each command actually does. That is a big mistake. 
This is a great opportunity to really understand what each line item does so that it not only gives you more confidence in Linux, but also allows you to fast track any future issues by being more specific with the kind of help you're looking for. Now, check out this video over here where I show you how to install Linux without removing Windows first. And check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head, which is somewhere down here. If you like this kind of tech content, I'll see you in this video or this video, or I'll see you in both. Let's go.